Greetings and salutations, people. Ew, never using that for an intro again. Back in 2018, I covered a pretty unique animated series coming out of France called Peepadou and the Super... That's no good. Special Friends, an educational animated series, and the reception I got was quite varied, going from This is amazing, I'll make sure to check it out, to This show is bad and you should feel bad for covering it. <laughs> well, here we are almost two years later, and they are trying to make a season two. Emphasis on the word trying. So Peepadoo is crowdfunding a season two. Now for those who don't know what Peepadoo is, I highly recommend checking out my video on the original show, or first season of the show now I guess. Keep in mind, it is an older video. Oh my god, I couldn't find my own video because I didn't put Peepadoo, the most notable part of the show's name, in the title. What the, what the hell? But it also contains gameplay from Blade Strangers, a simple and fun, if not abandoned, fighting game. So there's that. The TLDR though is that Peepadoo and the Super Fuck Friends, pretty sure I'm deep enough in the video that I can use the full name now, thanks YouTube, is an educational anime series covering a range of more adult subjects like STD, sexism, addiction, among other things, in a sexual and comedic way, though how successful they are at it will vary from viewer to viewer. I will warn potential viewers though that there is a lot of gross out humor in this series, so like I said, the entertainment value will vary from person to person. Now honestly, I'm not all that attached to the series, only watching a couple of episodes with others putting me off completely with their bodily comedy, but I really do appreciate it being uniquely an adult oriented sexual cartoon focusing on education. But what about- No. Not in this house. Shame on you. Anyways, initially I was just gonna, you know, give the Kickstarter a retweet, maybe pull a few dollars out of the Christmas fund to throw at them, but then I read a particular passage in the Kickstarter. Quote, because it's too sexual for most platforms, such as YouTube from which we got banned, and too soft for the adult platforms, we tried that too, Peepadoo doesn't seem to fit in any box, not even Japan, despite the fact that people are begging us for a second season. I absolutely loathe the idea in the vast majority of people's heads that sexuality and animation has to be so binary, either having incredibly little to no sexuality or being almost entirely composed of it. I've even seen people dismiss Sinran Kagura saying that the author should just make a hentai instead. I wish I was fucking kidding. So that lit a fire under my butt to make this video, which is good because it only has 30 something days. So what are they planning to do? Well, going by the information in the Kickstarter, this is an all or nothing campaign. If they don't reach the goal, then no season two, end of story. As far as I know, this isn't one of those cases where some invisible company is secretly funding the project and the Kickstarter money is simply to gauge interest. The base funding is going towards five new episodes with any extra money being used to fund more episodes in space. Je suis le docteur Lachatte. Selon mes calculs, il nous reste maintenant un mois d'oxygène. Aidez-nous. Je vous en prie. Yeah, for those who watched the original, while that had a more fantasy theme which fed into the idea of it being an adult parody of a children's cartoon, for season 2 they planned a travel universe summarizing the show as being Sex Trek, or Star Trek with sex full of plot twists and strong messages dealing with the issues of today. And that's right up my alley because when it comes to me and sci-fi... Oh, that's that good shit! So with all that said, I recommend checking out the Kickstarter, reading things for yourself, and seeing if the show is worth supporting towards the season 2. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's a Miss Pussycat art book with my name on it. So I'll see you guys next time. Or at least I would, but this video is kinda short. Like this Kickstarter isn't a game with a demo for me to comb through, or a franchise with mouthwatering lore, and I already covered the original series in a video. I just don't feel right not even breaking the 5 minute mark with this one. So if you don't mind, I'll take some extra time to just ramble about this quote. 
just for a little bit because this subject is something I kind of want to do an entire video on, but for now think of this as a taste without proper examples or heavy editing. Like I said earlier in this video, a lot of people in the west tend to heavily lean on one extreme or the other when it comes to sex and animation, either wanting none of it or wanting nothing but it in the sleaziest way possible. When there is such a vast middle ground of content to be created, that's one of the reasons that anime has such a unique feel to it, because over there, while things are far from the fantasy people like to project onto Japan, they do indeed have a culture, or I guess strong enough communities around entertainment to facilitate creating content in that grey zone, of varying quality of course. But in the west it's far more binary, that's why people are complaining about Fire Force, that's why people complained about Dead or Alive, things that don't take sex seriously but instead have fun with it. It's less about anyone's political beliefs and more to do with just how the west as a whole views sex. Simply put, no one expects things that incorporate that sort of entertainment to be good, but that's just on the consumer side of things. Then there's the business side where again companies also have that sort of binary thinking, not wanting to invest in, or run advertisements on, any sort of sexualized animation and when an adult company does it tends to be the most raunchiest, sketchiest thing possible still forcing that dichotomy. It's honestly very disheartening to see, though mentalities are shifting as more competent games, better adult games, service heavy anime series, or even straight up hentai that goes the extra mile gets exposed in the west. But the brighter side that I'd like to focus on is that sure some people might say that the 90s was a better place for grey zone content, maybe even the 80s, but in the modern era consumers have a lot of power through a variety of means but especially crowdfunding. Despite people who believe in that grey zone being a minority in the west, the world is big and a minority can be all an independent group needs to be successful, whether it be a cartoon on Kickstarter, a comic book on Indiegogo, a game on Steam, or even a small YouTuber with 5k subs on Patreon and Subscribestar. And over time successes have an effect and can move people out of their existing biases and more into respecting stuff made in that grey zone. And sometimes that something is only good for fat people, it ain't always that deep. So I'm gonna leave it there for now, maybe I'm being weird and idealistic, but that will be for another time with more research. Back on topic, make sure to check out the Kickstarter, it doesn't have any NSFW stuff so links will be in the description below and I will see you guys next time. Peace.